And we're back with another Father Son Podcast. Force is busting away some dance song music and snapping his fingers, sounding all good, watching musicals on YouTube. How you feeling, man? Good, how are you? Good, good. How was your day today? Good. Good. Would you do anything exciting? I did a social studies test. Was that exciting? Not really. Oh. Did you do good on it? Yeah, I got a 92. Is that good for white people or good for Asians? Not gonna, get in, both, I guess. not gonna get into Harvard with grades like ninety two. <laughs> Better get that up to hundred. You, they're prejudiced against Asians. They don't want them in there. I'm serious. <laughs> it's a problem. They're not letting Asian students in. They need to do better than uh, Americans or like white people. It's reverse racism. Well, not reverse racism. It is racism. We're keeping them out because they're doing better than white people. It's kind of crazy. Why wouldn't? Wh- what if they do do? What if they do better than the? White people or the other races. Then they're allowed in. <laughs> that makes no sense. That uh, doesn't make sense. Joe Rogan talks about it, like every week. So funny. Every time he talks about like any of the um any of the stuff. We'll get into that a different day. Uh your task was to come up with a topic for today. Did you come up with anything? <laughs> yep. What's your topic? So we both like history like we're both fascinated by history, right? Right. Correct. So, I'm kind of fascinated by history because it's surprising how people have the resolve or just what, how people do the things that they do. Because history, to me, kind of seems like a story almost. (laughs) Something that shouldn't be real but is. Why shouldn't it be real? What makes it seem not real? I don't know. It just sounds like how did America be Britain? Britain is across the sea, but they, like, if they had, they had European allies, which makes them, like, much bigger than the United States. And the United States had a lot less trained soldiers, which means Britain should have won, like, 80% of the time. Yeah, but but think about the time, the, the times. There was no planes, so you couldn't just fly over to the country. Um, there wasn't telephones, they couldn't talk to people. Like, across the country, I mean, you had to see each other to talk or have the mail delivered, which is some guy on a horse. It's not in a car, so it takes a long-ass time to get some mail. Like, for real, communication is a huge factor in our day-to-day lives. And you probably never, don't even remember time about cell phones. When I was a kid, there was no way to get a hold of you when you were a kid. You were out playing. No one could find you. Like, you were just not home. And today is entirely different. I can't even imagine... What I feel like if you were like gone all day and no one knew where you were, because I wouldn't know where you were. My mom wouldn't know where I was. I was out playing. I didn't have a phone. No one could get a hold of me. I was doing whatever I do, and there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot easier to get in trouble back in those days than it is today, because now you're more monitored. But so to have an wouldn't it be harder to get in trouble then because you weren't as monitored then and more more monitored now. Well, I mean, it was easier to do bad things. Maybe not easier to get in trouble. Because, like... You're, you're right about that, because trouble is different then, and, and everything's a little bit different. But it was very much easier to get on the wrong track and do the wrong thing without anyone knowing. Mm-hmm. Um, also, how did people not find out about the Americas for, like, 6,400 years? Well, I mean, just think about it. When you go sailing on a ship, you only have what you bring with you. And there's no motors. So they're going by wind. But there's like 6,400 years for two people from different hemispheres to meet. And like, if you were, if somebody just started sailing off the west coast, it wouldn't be as far to get to the other side of the world, right? That's still really far, man. Like... You know how the waves in the sea are. And just think, these are boats built without machines, man. This is some handcrafted perfection. And boats are really, really, really expensive. Right? Because think of about the time and effort it takes to make a boat. Right now, we could probably make a boat like they do in, in a couple of months. Maybe even weeks. Right? Because you just get the lumber and you saw it up in the mill. Then it would probably take months or a year to make a boat. And then you got to put the manpower on the boat. 
computer machines, dude, it'd take like less than a week if you needed to build a ship like that. Yeah, but you still need to assemble all the parts, and they still need to assemble the parts, and it's this huge thing. Well, if you have and you machines, gotta do, it. do all of it. Be yeah, but I mean, even still today, we still need hand people. I mean, just think about measuring and cutting that stuff the right size. Like, that's some really craftsmanship to make these boats. And they don't have uh, steel the same way we do either. They're not yeah. these giant steel machines back in the uh, you know 15 1600s they're probably mostly wood and how why why did people like i get why people would want to separate from europe but why would people want to go across an ocean to a place they don't know like that that also doesn't make sense we actually even have examples of that today what do you what, that caravan coming from mexico to the united states is doing like exactly the same thing but like like you said, it's a lot harder to get from the it's hard to get from the east coast of the eastern hemisphere to the to the east coast of the western hemisphere, and that's the way they got to each other. So like, it's, they're just trying to get a new life and have a chance at being uh, wealthy and famous and having a great life. And there's lots of promise to that, you know. Would you do that though? Um. If I was younger, yes, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd want to take a family over that. I think I'd be more content to live the life in the home country. But when I was younger, dude, I would definitely want to do that. I think it'd be cool. And how do people not realize, like, all this bad stuff, like slavery and stuff, like slavery and other things? And how did they not realize that that's wrong and immoral? They made excuses for it, but, like, Nowadays, obviously, slavery is illegal. But, like, how did they not realize that what they were doing was, like, killing more people than they wanted to die anyways? So, you, the mentality of owning a slave is much different than, um, like, even probably anything that you can comprehend. Number one, you're in a different time. Number two, you're such a good person. Um... People saw slaves as property, not people. They weren't like people. They were property. And they were assets. And they were to be used however you wanted to. You paid for them. That was that they, they didn't feel emotions towards them. Most of them. Some people did. Some people were good and they freed them. Some people didn't. And then when you have a culture that has slavery... You raise the people that are around slaves to treat slaves like that. So they don't know anything different. They don't know better. And even if you have, you're growing up and you're like, oh, wow, those are just like people. They're people. When everyone you trust, love, and respect tells you their property, how would you feel? What if the dog really understands what we're saying and we treat him like a dog, like a pet? You know? And... The only reason we treat him like a pet is because me and mom have always told you that he's a pet and he doesn't think. But what if he's really smarter than us? I guess. Yeah. I mean, that that would be the example. I mean, it's not true because a dog obviously doesn't talk. But if he did, like, maybe barks are their own language, their dog language, like dolphins. Dolphins communicate with each other like that, you know? I also, like, it's just so crazy. I'm like... I also don't comprehend war, but that's obviously because war has never been on my own home, like, near my home. So, I don't get, like, I don't understand how the mentality that people have once they survive the war. The mentality they have once they survive the war, or the mentality to go to war, or, I'm not really sure what, what the, that like, question actually was. You know the people in the war-torn countries that somehow survive? Right. Their mentality is, like, so much different than people who have stuff. Mm hmm Like, they're literally fighting for their lives. Right. So, my grandfather fought in World War II. He was um, a spy for the American Army with the Germans because he spoke fluent German. Uh, he was captured. He was in a POW camp. He was tortured. Uh, he came back like super skinny uh my grandma lived through the depression and i grew up around people that went through a war and they lived through a war so i think 
maybe I have a little bit better grasp of it, but... Like, at the time, I'm just like, oh, they're so old. They don't understand anything. We're not from the Depression. We're not going to reuse it. We'll just buy a new one. We're not from, you know, the mentality is just different. It's hard for us to understand because they went through such trying and tough times. They're very, very tough people. I There's a, a great saying I read, like, um, hard times make hard people. Hard times make easy times. Easy times make soft people. Soft people make <laughs> bad times. Bad times make hard people, and it's just a, a cycle that repeats itself over and over and over again. There's more stuff I don't get too. How how do the Mongols like conquer ha- like a huge part of the world and just basically beat everybody that they fought? And how? Because the Mongols were bad ass, dude. Yeah, but how has how did nobody stop them, and why did nobody just team up and kill them? Like I said at the time, communication is so difficult, right? Now we have Google Translate, too. So, first of all, if you're two different tribes that don't speak the same language, it's very, very hard to communicate. On top of that, you have to travel to communicate. So, if you're, like, days and days and days and days away or weeks or months, you know, and you're, like, kind of going to the boundary, you barely understand each other, and it's really hard to communicate. So, these giant Mongol hordes come in. They uh, kill all your men, rape your women, take the babies, and make more Mongols. You know, that's, and that's how their army just gets bigger, and they kill everybody. And uh, back then, might made right. If you were stronger, there was no laws. You were the law. And people don't really understand that kind of time, especially people like your age. As you get older, you'll see it more. You'll, you'll see, you'll experience people that get what they want just because they're big and strong and they can push you around. And that still happens to the, today to a certain point, you know, but... You're a little bit more insulated because you're going to be able to fight. So it's a little bit different. What about, like, the pyramids? That's, like, the biggest question. How did The aliens th- built the pyramids. So the UFOs came down and showed us how to build them. And they built them for us and they left. Do you know You know who Cleopatra is, right? So Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of the cell phone than Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of the pyramids. So the time between the pyramids were being built and Cleopatra being born is less amount of time difference than from when Cleopatra was born to cell phones became used. The pyramids were built thousands of years before Cleopatra, I'm saying. Oh. And uh, cell phones were built less thousands of years after she was born. So those things are old there are amazing structures. They're built by people without machines who we think have less advanced technology than us, but who use math in a way that we we don't even use as well today. So there's, they did some amazing stuff. No one knows. And Joe Rogan has this great comedy skit. How- He's like, what if we had a super advanced race before and then the stupid people just outbreeded the <laughs> smart people? Because, you know... Stupider people have more kids, and eventually there's no smart people left. And then we ended up the way society was because that happened. And, like, the Egyptians that built the pyramids were really more advanced than us. And how did the U.S., like, survive? How how could their democracy not, like, just fall apart? Because democracies didn't work before. I mean, all the other... Democracy attempts have failed. Like what? What are the democracy attempts? Like Rome and Greece? They, they weren't really democracies, though. They were dictatorships. Because Caesar uh, ran Rome, right? Yeah, but uh, Rome was a representative government at one point. And then in Athens, there was literally a democracy. Everybody packed in this one building and made decisions. Right. Obviously. Well, Greece lasted a really, really, really long time. So did Rome. They were both the uh, the highlights of the community, of the the highlights of civilization at that time, not the community. But like, Jesus. and the way the people are, how how did just a few of people that we call our founding fathers, how do they bring everybody together into one democracy without it falling apart? Everyone wanted the same thing, and they were at the point where they had differing opinions, but they could still get along and get stuff done. And the government was much smaller. It was on a much smaller scale. Thirteen colonies is a lot different than fifty. You know, and as technology got more and more advanced, more and more people 
have a say in stuff. Because back then, like, the regular person probably didn't have too much of a say in government like we do today. They don't know what's going on. You know, government was this, you know, the people who were represented in the building, if they reported it in a paper, they reported pretty much what they said, you know. This is different times. The communication is such a big thing that we have today. Instant communication. So huge technological advance. And getting back to your your question about the U.S., Europe, Europe has to sell people all the way across the ocean. It costs so much money to fight the United States. Um, it probably ended up not being financially viable to fight them. But didn't they have more money than the U.S.? They have more money, but what are you going to get out of it? You know, because there's got to be a certain amount of money that the colonies are making the, uh, you know, the, the government. And then how much does it cost to get that back? And at some point, it doesn't cost enough to go over and the cost of not... Not only is there a monetary cost of building all the equipment and the arming the soldiers and sending them over there, there's a political cost because you're losing people and people are dying and you got to send people over. So your own, your own country's on unrest. And then there's the... Um, stress factor of like being a ruler and dealing with not winning and looking bad in front of the you know entire world. But if we lost, England would still have control of us. Maybe this, we wouldn't be at a, as advanced. But like Europe, but in the end, England would have been like the richest country in the world and would probably rule the world pretty much. Yeah, it's very difficult to take a country over and. Um, even just for trying to keep peace in the Middle East, you see how tough that is, right? It hasn't gone well in the last, what is it, 2018, last like 30, 40 years. Um, it's very difficult to go into a country and try and control the people, especially in a space as big as the United States. How many soldiers are you going to send over? They all got to come over in boats, you know? There's a lot of people getting over here. And the French were down in Mexico, and uh, who was in Canada? French was in Canada too, right, at the time? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I think it was French and English colonies, or no? Yeah, in it was Canada. all French. There was. There I I gotta go back and look, but I mean, even with all the colonies there, there's still a lot of land to cover and a lot. It's just a tough war, and then we were getting financial help from people, so it was. It's just tough. It's it's tough for England to deal with it. I mean, just that's such a vast distance. Yeah. It'd be like, it'd be like I was trying to walk to uh, Grandpa Grandpa Mike's house, like take a horse to Grandpa Mike's house, and then, you know, with no phones to talk, and then figure out what was going on and come back and do it again. Everything was so different back in that time. And it's hard for us to even understand. You got to read uh, like books and novels from that time period. It'd be very interesting for you, I think. Mm-hmm. How did? I also don't understand, like, just one last thing. Kind of how Puritans became so powerful, because they still exist today, but they just dispelled people. Wouldn't that cause suspicion or lead to a questioning of your leader? You mean Puritans as, uh, like, the religion? Yeah, the religion. See, I'm not really sure how all that works because it's the psychology of people. We always need to have... It seems like people always need to have one thing that they believe in and then, like, one group to be belong to. You know, and everyone that's not in that group is a bad guy. And I think that's how the whole Puritan thing got going. And, you know, it was very similar to all the uprisings that we see today. You know, uh, you know all the stuff me and Mom talk about with... Uh, you know the the bleeding left, like the extreme left liberals, uh, you know, and extreme right too. Same thing, you know. Like every one of these groups are powerful because there's a lot of people that believe in what they're saying, even though it doesn't really make a lot of sense sometimes. But what if they started just like not letting people that believed in them? Or people that question them and making them, like, not be able to be a leftist or a rightist anymore. If you have a question, what do you do about something? Besides for ask me. Uh, 
either I ask somebody or just try and figure it out myself. Don't you look on Google a lot? Yeah. Or So, there's no Google. What if you looked it up in a book? There's really no books. You know, there's no, there's no print. Uh, there's a printing press, but there's not very many books. But wouldn't you be questioning your leaders, not like having questions about the teachings? Maybe, but it's a different time. You don't have a lot of time to sit around and think about anything. That's true. You get up in the morning, you do your chores. It's dark. You don't have lights. There's no electricity. You can't be like, Chick, all right, what am I gonna do now? What, you know, there's no lights. It's a different. Life is hard. People die from sickness. There's no doctors. There's no cars. Everywhere you go, you gotta walk. It's hard to get food. You're struggling to survive every day. So when you're at like the point where you don't know if you're gonna live or die every day, uh, extreme religions seem pretty normal. I would imagine. You know, it's hard to put yourself into those shoes and live in those times, but I could see that. You know, you want to be on God's good favor because. Could be dead the next day. You could step on a rock and get an infection, and there's no antibiotic, so you're gonna die, yeah. or your legs gonna come off, and you still might die from that infection, right? It's it's sad. It's difficult times, and that's what we've prospered for through humans to give us the society that we have today with all our privileges. Yeah. And sometimes it's great that I think it's great that we look back at history, and we can chart the path of what Amer- uh, humans have done, not Americans. That's pretty. Uh, I don't know. That's not what I meant to say. I didn't mean Americans, but us as a human race, everything's evolved from nothing, right? And we need to keep that in mind as we go forward and we alter our society to what we have today. Yeah. You know, things in the past aren't going to work and the same way they worked in the past, but maybe they can work with modifications or, you know, it's important to know what happened in the past and then use that for the future. Mm-hmm. Like the political correctness movement. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Not extreme leftists. Like the political correctness movement. Mm. Which is pretty much extreme left. Yeah. Anything else? Any other history questions? No. Just questioning how how like human psychology could just be so so weird. How And how history kind of doesn't make sense at times, <laughs> I guess. Well, people don't always make sense. How many irrational people do you know? A lot, right? People that are crazy. And some of those people are going to be leaders. And in the past, there's some crazy leaders. We could talk about some crazy presidents one day, like Lyndon B. Johnson or uh, (laughs) there's some other other crazy presidents. But um, there's some great stories. And you've got to remember when we're talking about psychology, we develop from animals, right? We have the same... Basic programming is the dog or a wolf or a tiger or a lion. You know, we're, we're mammals. And now we evolved into human beings. So now we have intelligence behind these human natures. Our, and that's where some of our human, we call human nature, comes from desires that are bred into us to carry on the species. So now we're at a point where we can affect the way that the humans develop. So we're getting smarter. We're getting better technology. People that would have died in the past are dead. Just think, me, you, and mom would probably be dead back in the day. We don't. We wouldn't be able to see. We wouldn't have glasses. We wouldn't be able to see threats coming. We'd probably be chopped up and killed. Our genes would have never passed on, so there wouldn't be, you know, there'd be less people that needed glasses because all those people died in the past, right? <laughs> now we just get glasses we can see. No big deal. You know, three thousand years ago. We're going to be dead. Some lion's going to eat us because we didn't see him coming. Right? Mm-hmm. Or we'd be some badass people. <laughs> One or the other, you know? <laughs> some Matt Murdochs. Yeah, some Matt Murdochs. <laughs> Otherwise, our, our genes wouldn't pass on and we wouldn't be around, you know? Our heads have been progressively getting bigger as we've getting older. And we're getting smarter, but that's happening because now babies with big heads can get out of the birth canal. If we can't get out of the birth canal, we can do a C-section and pull you out of your mom's belly. There's been a whole, there's a whole lot of fascinating stuff about that. And uh, I don't think you're quite ready to start watching those podcasts yet. But in another year or two, we'll uh, start turning on to some really good podcasts about stuff like that. Human development is amazing. But 
it's tough because religion can trump that. Like sometimes people don't think humans evolved from mammals or they believe in their religious texts. So you need to always be careful. Um, I'm going to talk about stuff like this a little bit sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's a crazy world. Mm -hmm. Some people don't believe humans evolved from monkeys. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Could be anything. But we're pretty sure we know. <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, man? 25 minutes. We did a long one tonight. Yeah. Nothing else, though. Mom call while we were uh, doing it. I can see the phone blinking. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll get out of here. You can give her a call back. And we're out of here for today. What are we going to do tomorrow? I forgot. I talked about it on the last podcast. I have to listen to it again. Son of a gun. Oh, I think tomorrow's my turn. And then Friday we're going to talk about... Oh, we'll talk about what happened at the gym, I think, Friday. We'll figure it out. All right, man. For Forrest and Jeff, we're out of here. Father, son, chat. We love each other. I love you, man. Love you too. Thank you, dude. You're the best. You're pretty handsome today. You're looking less Asian today, more white. Yesterday you are looking pretty Asian. <gasps> <laughs> All right, we're out.